Hello YouTube, this is Noah, and today I'm going to be loading the software onto the Raspberry Pi and demoing the final product. And uh, it will be a longer video, so please do check in the description for timestamps. So what you're going to need here are two things for your computer. You're going to need to download RetroPie Disk Image. And this is their website right here. I will have the links down in the description so you can find uh, exactly where to go. And they have two different versions here, one for the Pi Zero and the Pi One, and then one for the Pi Two, Three, and Three B Plus. They're all under this family. And because I have the Three B Plus, I will be getting this version right here. So after you've downloaded that, just make sure to leave it in the place where you will find it. I'm leaving it in my downloads area. And nextly, you're going to download this program right here. This is called Etcher. It's completely safe. It is open source, and it doesn't download an installer. It just downloads the program. This is what's going to burn the uh, RetroPie image onto your SD card so that your, retro, your Raspberry Pi will uh, view the software off of the SD card. And so just download it for your appropriate uh, operating system here. Once you have those two downloaded, you're going to want to have them easily available, and you're going to want to open um, etcher and so that may take a second take this time to take your uh, SD card and plug it into your computer using an SD card adapter if you or if your computer has one a SD card reader using either the um, SD card adapter that comes with your SD card or an adapter that you already have unless it's obviously built into your computer and once etcher opens up here you're going to select the image and in my case, since it's in my downloads, it's going to be right here. You're going to open that here and select the drive. This is where it should be detecting my SD card, but it's not. So let me see if I can plug it in again. There it is. That is my SD card that I just plugged in. And just make sure you're uh, uploading it to your SD card and not your hard drive, because if it flashes it, it will um, basically wipe everything on it. So just make sure that it's got everything whatever you're flashing it to has everything off of it that you want off of it or it will be gone forever after you flash here. So click continue once you have the drive you want and hit flash. And if this is your first time using it, it may ask you, um, it'll, it may come up with that admin prompt that you saw there. And um, you're just going to let it run. All right, our flash is completed successfully, so you're good to close out Etcher now and eject your SD card because you now have the RetroPie software loaded up onto your SD card. It is good to go. All right, so now we are going to be doing the um, boot up for the Raspberry Pi RetroPie software. And so make sure to switch your input source to um, whatever you are plugging in your Raspberry Pi with. In my case, my monitor doesn't have an HDMI, but I have an HDMI to um, DisplayPort adapter, and I will be using that. And so you basically want to hook your HDMI into your Raspberry Pi, primarily. You're going to want to put your SD card into the SD card slot on your Raspberry Pi, and you're going to want to plug in your power to the Raspberry Pi. And it sh if you've done everything right, it should start booting up now, at least once I press the power button, if not when I plug it in immediately. Alright, so everything did not go as planned. Um, what ended up happening was my uh, computer monitor ended up, uh, I think either the DisplayPort cable or the DisplayPort, it, the port itself may have had an um, issue. And the Raspberry Pi was completely functional, everything was working fine, but it, nothing was coming up on my monitor because of either the cable or the port itself. So we will instead be using my uh, TV, because my TV has an HDMI port, and I needed a workaround for this video. So I will be starting up the Raspberry Pi now, so you can see what the boot sequence looks like. And it should just pop on after I switch the power on. And it's going to go through the boot sequence here, disregard all that code. That is what you're looking for. That is the sign of life. So you're just going to let it run through its boot sequence. It's going to take maybe uh, less than a minute so far. Um, and then, yeah, just have your keyboard ready. I feel like this is the easiest to do with a uh, keyboard to start out with. So I can set up this next feature here. You can still do it with the gamepad and set this up later if you want. But um, 
in order to get ROMs on this, I'd like to be using the Wi-Fi method. And um, in order to do that, I need to have a keyboard plugged in so I can enter my Wi-Fi information. So I will just be using the keyboard for the whole part of the setup here. So it's going to start up Emulation Station, and there's the welcome screen. So you're just going to hold the A button on your device, and in this case will be my keyboard. There you go. And then just program your keyboard. And this thing can have multiple controllers, so I'm just going to go through my keys here. So it looks like it's A to continue. All right. So here is the RetroPie. This is what everything looks like so far. And um, what we're going to configure first is the Wi-Fi here. So I am going to do that and show you. It's going to do a kind of a weird thing. Um, you may not be used to this. So it's going to go to the terminal really quickly so we can launch this and that's perfect blue normal you're just gonna um, hit yes you do want to configure that so let's do that now and this is gonna switch back to the keyboard keys rather than the keys you programmed so um, we're gonna choose a current network alright so once you have configured your Wi-Fi um, it should say Wi-Fi connected and you can back out and it'll take you back to the RetroPie menu so I'm going to be transferring over my ROMs here. This, these are the ROMs that I have, and um, like I said, because of the legality of ROMs, I will not be showing you today how to obtain them. So I will just be showing you the ones that I have installed on my computer right now. What you're going to do is just match them up with the console over here. Now to get to this, you're going to have to type this in your um, Windows Explorer browser window. I don't know if there's a way to do this on the Mac, um, I'm sure there's something similar that you can do, but essentially once you have your Pi connected to your Wi-Fi, you're going to enter just this part right here. It's going to be backslash backslash RetroPi, all one word. And once you enter that, it will take you to your Raspberry Pi's file system. And this is going to be over Wi-Fi, so because this thing's connected over Wi-Fi, you can access the files of it without actually being inside the device or with the device plugged into your computer. Or with um, without using a... Um, USB drive to transfer anything over so this is just more of a convenient way to get your ROMs on at least in my opinion so I'm going to open up the ROMs folder and back to my uh, my ROMs that I have installed on my computer I have some for the Atari 800 so I will drag them over you just got to make sure that you have the um, right files for the right um, system otherwise it may not work correctly and I just adjusted the windows here so it's a little bit easier without it uh, switching back and forth. My Atari 7800 ROMs, some Game Boy ROMs, and that's just going to be GB. It's going to might take a second to transfer or two. Um, I'm going to have my Game Boy Advanced ROMs, which is one. <laughs> and because it's going over Wi-Fi, it may take longer than if it was uh, over a. Uh, wired connection or from a uh, from a USB drive so let's grab the Genesis ones and I'm gonna speed this up for you a little bit all right so I've transferred over now all of the ROMs that I have that I want to go on the device and so we're gonna be switching back over to the Raspberry Pi all right so we're now back on the Raspberry Pi and what we're going to be doing from here is the ROMs obviously aren't on it yet. So how to get them on, you are going to go to um, Menu. And you're just going to scroll down to Quit. Oops, press the wrong button here. Forget that I have the controls configured a little bit differently for my keyboard. and you're going to go to restart emulation station and this should only take a second it will get you right back into RetroPie it's going to say really and you're going to say yes and now after booting back up you're going to be seeing all of the games that you just transferred over from your computer now one thing you may notice when uh, taking a look at these games is that it just has what they were called and nothing else and so um, some people may not like that 
And so um, in order to fix that, what you do is go to menu and you see where it says scraper. You're going to click that and just do scrape from whatever it has selected initially. Um, scrape, scrape, uh, blah. Go to filter, all games. And to make it easier, you can just turn this off here. That will make uh, the process a little bit easier. And then just hit start. So anyways, once you go to your main menu, you can customize this a little bit more. You can change the sound and stuff and um, change the UI. Um, I have it on full right now. Screensaver settings. You can just do a slideshow or dim or however you like that. Um, you can change what kind of transition you have on. I personally like it set on fade. And you can choose a theme. And I will show you how to get themes right here. Alright, in order to change your themes, you're going to go to Retropie. And you're going to hit Configure. And you're going to go down to your themes right there. And it's going to launch a sort of like code box window that you may be familiar with by now. And if you just go to... install the themes that you wish to install and I'm just gonna basically install most of them but for the purpose of this video I'm just going to install a few alright after you have everything installed that you'd like you can hit escape and it should take you back to your main menu here and from there you can go back and hit escape go down to our UI settings and select your theme let's try made a pixel and see how that turns out and when you go back to the main menu you have now have your new themes and I like this one a lot because it kind of um, has the uh, pixel art of these eras and it has you know a few game examples off to the left and right as well as a description of each console when you go to it so it's a really cool uh, classic feel to it all right and I'm just gonna play a little bit of asteroids or wrong one oops I'm still not used to the controls on my keyboard rather than the controller um, just to show you a demonstration of how well this, uh, or how the RetroPie works. So it'll launch a little command box here, and then it's going to go into the game. So uh, let's get to it. And I am really not used to the controls here. Yeah, I'm not used to the controls on the keyboard here. I'm definitely going to need to get this controller set up. This is ridiculous. I just crashed three to or three or four times. So, um, yeah, it's basically how the SNES, or not SNES, <laughs> RetroPie works. All right, so that about wraps it up. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please do leave them down in the comments. There's a lot that could be asked here. I showed a lot in this video, and there's probably a lot I didn't show that you're curious about, so please don't hesitate to ask in the comment section. I try to look at and answer every comment I see. Please like this video if you found it useful or interesting, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you like this one or um, want to see more videos like it. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.